Well, good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service, second week in Advent. Time goes some fast, doesn't it? It's nice to see you this morning. We warmly welcome you and pray that <clears throat> each and every one of us have come this morning uh, for the same reason, that is to uplift and glorify the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen? Thank you, Ben, for that beautiful selection. Our hearts have been warmed by that this morning already. We thank you for your ministry. These are difficult days for everybody. There's no doubt about that. But when we can, when we can come together, as we have again this morning, I believe it uplifts our spirits, and I believe that we uh, are drawn closer to uh, the Lord, no doubt, but one another as well as the core family. So I just pray God's blessing upon each and every one of us this morning, and in these difficult days that we would be supportive uh, to one another. Just a couple of announcements that I need to make mention of. First of all, this evening at 7 o'clock, we will be having our tree lighting online, of course, and uh, the memorials will be read that uh, each and every one sent in. And you can uh, view that tonight, either on our website, and most everyone here would know our website, just Google Trinity Bay Cell, and the rest almost comes up automatically, but you'll find us on our website or on Facebook, Trinity Bay Cell, Facebook, or you can uh, get us as well on uh, YouTube. So uh, there's no excuse why you can't find us uh, tonight. And by all means, uh, get together with some family member if you want to, if you can, and uh, share the evening in the reading of the memorials. As well, another very important announcement. Please uh, listen as I would read this. It says, this coming Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4, the band will be starting its Christmas caroling. There will be two small bands. One will do Dildo, the other will do New Harbor. And uh, on Sunday afternoon, one band, uh, one of the smaller bands will do South Dildo, and the other will do Old Shop. And uh, there's a schedule in the porch for the band members to pick up on their way out, and the dates for Blaketown and Whitburn are on that uh, schedule out there. So band members, remember to pick up the schedules on the way out. And uh, there are no uh, caroling the air. We can't go and join the band. So we just pray God's blessing up on the band and upon their ministry uh, <clears throat> for this Christmas. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is our second week of Advent, and it's quickly, Christmas is quickly drawing near. And I just want to read Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Beautiful words for us this morning as we prepare our hearts to watch the second video of Advent at this time.
Let's bow in prayer together. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity. And Lord, as we look at our world and we look at all the hurting people around us and all the people that uh, are in need in different ways, Lord, we know that uh, the biggest need we have right now is love, is your love in us. And so, Lord, this morning as we come this second week of Advent, we ask that your love would shine in us so brightly this Christmas season especially. That those around us, those that are hurting, those that are lonely, those that are sick, those that are dying, those that need you would see your love in us as we seek to be your hands and your feet to this world around us. Lord, we ask that you would be present among us this morning, that your Holy Spirit would be here, that our hearts would be touched and our lives would be changed as we spend these moments with you. We pray in your name. Amen. At this time, we're going to sing Joy to the World, the Lord has come. I invite you to stand. And you know, because you're wearing masks, you have to sing a little extra. A little extra loud this morning as we celebrate the joy that is ours through the coming of Jesus' birth. I know it's a, you know, we're all thinking that this Christmas is going to be different, and it's going to be difficult, and it's going to be challenging, and all those other things that are coming with COVID, and as we watch cases kind of go up and down, we know not what the future holds, but we know who holds the future, and he rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. So let's sing it out this morning. Let's celebrate that fact together. if you like, but we're going to continue to sing together. thought she was going to lead right into it, it seemed like. Didn't know if it was my job. I will enter his gate. Thank you. 
mercies of the Lord. That's why we're here. Not because we got it all together, not because we're perfect people, because we are people in need of a Savior. And if it wasn't for the grace of God and the mercy of God, we don't even want to think about where we'd be, but we look forward to being with Him in heaven someday. I'm so glad
What is the verse, that third one you had there? He's a Holy Spirit and Comforter. Beautiful. That's what we're going to sing. He's the Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit. He would send a comforter and a guide. And when we think about the Christmas story, we think about nativity, if we play it forward, we, it makes a lot more sense to us. God came to us as a, a baby, but his plan was to be with us for eternity, and for us to be with him for eternity. And so the Holy Spirit and comforter is a promise that can be for the Christmas season as well as every day of our lives, no matter what we're facing, no matter what stress we're facing. What kind of a pain and heartache and brokenness? He's Holy Spirit and come. your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. And sometimes we, we get caught up in Christmas as the babe in the manger, but of course he came for more than that. He came to save us. So we'll lift up this in praise and worship to him this morning, realizing that he wasn't just the babe in the manger. He was also the Christ on the cross. We'll lift it up together. I lift your name up.
we're going to sing one that I was, I was waiting to see if he was going to start it. Maybe a little more unfamiliar with y you, but uh, a beautiful name that, again, talks about uh, the name of Christ. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Oh, we don't have the words for that. Oh, yes. It's going to be a solo. So as he sings it, if you know the words, you can join in and sing along. If not, we'll count it as a solo this morning. A strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no other, your name. Let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to sing but your name. And we realize this morning that a lot of us in this world put our faith and our trust in other things. And in the end, all those things will fail, except for your name, except for the power that we have in you. And so, Lord, we come before you this morning, and uh, we just want to remember those who are especially struggling today. We think of those that are sick, those that are lonely, those that are afraid those that are living in fear of these days, Lord, and the uncertainty. Lord, we, we think of those that are struggling to make ends meet. 
those that are uncertain about their job and their financial situations, those that can't see family and friends, and those, Lord, that will find themselves in a very different Christmas this year because they've lost loved ones. Lord, we're so thankful this morning that uh, you're not dependent upon us to tell you their names because you already know them. You know all about them, Lord. You see their hearts and you see their grief. You see their sorrow. You see their fear. You see every need that they have today. And Lord, we just want to bring them before you. Lord, each of us, I'm sure today, probably have names upon our hearts and our minds. People we know really need a special touch from you today. Really need to know your presence and your peace that passes understanding. And so, God, we, we bring them this morning before you, and we just ask you to send your Holy Spirit to surround them, to meet them where they are today, whether that be here in this room or in their homes or on the highways or wherever it is they find themselves to today. We pray that they would sense your presence. You would surround them. Lord, you are the good shepherd. You care for your sheep. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just uplift them, hold them in the palm of your hand today. Lord, I pray that they would find their peace, their strength, their desire, their need to go on and to face the days ahead because they know the strength and the power that comes from your name, that comes from trusting in you and knowing that you will make a way. Lord, I pray that you will use each one of us to be your hands and your feet to those that are hurting and those that are in need. Lord, help us to love them. Love them the way that you tell us to love through your word. To sacrifice our own desires and wants for the needs of others. And Lord, this Christmas, may we be especially, especially aware of that love can shine through us to those that are hurting this season. Lord, we thank you for your presence that we've felt here today. We know that you are here. We know that you hear our prayers. And so now in faith, believing and trusting, we leave it at your feet. We leave it in your hands because we know that you are more than able to do all we ask or imagine. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
morning. Instead of just part part of the band, you guys uh, deserve that applause. That was a that was a lot of sound from a from a few people. So we're so thankful for the band and for for this part and the other part and however many other parts there are. I'm not sure, but we're thankful for all of them and for what they bring. Um, we're going to hear from God's word. Hopefully, we have the technical issues worked out at the back because I see there are some. But we're gonna, we're going to hear. We're going to hope. If not, then uh, we'll scramble up here. But that's okay. We're going to hear about uh, Joseph this week. And yes, we are. I'm big stuff in my weeks. I'm, I'm trying to get ahead of stuff, and I'm all trying to figure out what exactly I'm preaching on one week from the next. But we are going to hear about Joseph this morning. And uh, what God will say to us through that. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The glory of Christmas. My name's Joseph, and in the Christmas Nativity play, The Glory of Christmas, I play Joseph. That's right. I was born to play this role. Joseph has no clue what to do when it comes to babies. So in order for him to play the role of Joseph, we got him an infant simulator doll from the local home act teacher. So, you know, he could practice a bit. It's an insane shriek it's a baby. It's a burp. Oh. It's a burp? Oh, so put your fingers under and try to find the... Where's the spine on this thing? I don't know. Check the front. Joseph is terrified. I don't blame him. Babies don't even have kneecaps. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Burping like a boss? Uh, yeah, way to go, fake dad. I heard things may not be going so well with the infant simulator doll. Hey, Joseph, your mom's here to pick you up. Yeah, coming. As you can see, my mom's house is full of antiques. So I did what any good home economics teacher would do. I sent Joseph home with a baby egg. I think about Joseph, like Bible Joseph, a lot what it would have been like for him to have an angel come and tell him that his wife is pregnant with God's child. Ha! Like he would have had to really dig deep and find his, his compassion and his understanding because he really, really loved her. My dear Mary, it is going to be a long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census. Especially with your belly being so humongous. With, 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 with child, Joseph, the line is being with child. <sighs> right. Sorry, ma'am. Is the age difference what's bothering you? I want you to know it doesn't bother me. It's, it's, okay, please, people, let's just take it from the top. I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? than most unlikely folks to do the biggest things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems like those are the ones he always picks. Because he's a God that'll never give up on us. Ah! <laughs> yes! Ah! We need to get I have swaddled! Ha! Ah! Hello everyone, I'm so glad you're joining us today for our second message in our series, The Glory of Christmas. There are some verses in 1 Corinthians that I love. They are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 to 31, and this is what they say. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God shows the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. 
It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. All throughout history, God proves again and again those words. Again and again, he proves that he chooses the foolish things to shame the strong. Again and again throughout history, God uses the least expected people to bring about his plans and his purposes. A quick read through some of the most popular Bible stories reveals that God never uses the people you would expect him to use. Those who are rich and noble or well-equipped for the job. Think about it. Abraham was an old man. Moses stuttered. Rahab was a prostitute. David was an adulterer and murderer. Matthew was a tax collector. Saul was a former persecutor of Christians. And don't forget the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish. And that's just the short list. Time and time again, God uses everyday, run-of-the-mill people to accomplish his will and ultimately do great things that reveal his glory. Why does he do that? Because he never gets tired of receiving glory in situations that can only be attributed to his own work through imperfect, lacking, weak, underwhelming, and dependent people. That 1 Corinthians passage puts it this way, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. God enjoys involving the most unexpected, the most unqualified people in his story because it shows what only he can do as they follow his lead. Joseph is certainly an example of what God can do when the ordinary allow God to use them in unordinary ways. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24, tells us Joseph's story. Look at verses 18 and 19 with me. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. There's nothing extraordinary about Joseph. I think sometimes we forget that. Joseph was human. The New King James Version calls him a just man, but Joseph was also just a man. After Mary tells him about the angel's visit to her and how she was pregnant, Joseph is still filled with doubts. How is this even possible? Mary must have fell and hit her head or something. Who on earth would ever, ever believe this story? This is not the kind of marriage I had dreamed of. What will everybody think of me, of us? Why would God decide to identify someone like Joseph, someone so ordinary, someone filled with so many doubts and questions to play the role of Jesus' earthly father? Because God has a way of choosing the least likely people to do great things so that his glory may be displayed in them. Joseph was about to learn this. He thinks over his decision to call off the engagement to Mary when God intervenes and convinces Joseph that he could do this, that he could be a part of this amazing plan, that he could be used by God in such a way that would bring great glory to God. Matthew 1, 20 to 25 tells us, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. God would do it again, just like he had time after time throughout history. God would take the foolish and weak things to shame the wise. God would take a willing nobody, Joseph, and use him to bring about the glory of the greatest story ever told. The Joseph that we watched on the video was probably not at all like Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, except for one thing. Near the end of the video, the director says this, I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? The most unlikely folks to do the biggest things. It seems like those are the ones he always picks because he is a God who will never give up on us. He is a God who will never give up on us. There is so much truth in those couple lines. There is so much hope for those of us that come to this Christmas season feeling much like Joseph. How many of us feel radically underqualified to do all that is on our plate in a way that gives glory to God this Christmas? For the one who feels afraid about the future, for the one who feels inadequate to take care of your family like you think you should. For the one who feels like you're in a dead-end job. For the one who feels stretched between taking care of kids and aging parents. For the one who feels misunderstood. For the one who feels unjustly treated. For the one who feels in over your head with responsibilities that were not part of your plan. You are exactly the kind of person God desires to use to bring him great glory this Christmas. Although you may feel like the most unlikely person to do something great for God, realize today that that is exactly when God can use you most. Do not give up on God this Christmas because he will never give up on you. He wants you to know that he is with you and for you this Christmas. He wants you to know that like Joseph, he desires you to trust him and not be afraid in your circumstances. Day by day, you can find courage and strength as you follow God's leading in your life to do what he wants you to do and say what he wants you to say. Each of us have our own story. Each of us are unique in personality, in history, in circumstances. Only you can do what God wants to do through you. There is no one else that can bring glory to God in the unique way that you can. If you feel like you are the only one who is radically underqualified to do such a thing, remember, Part of the glory of Christmas is that Christmas is about God using the most radically underqualified people to bring him glory. He regularly uses those who find themselves in less than ideal circumstances to bring him the greatest glory. You have been uniquely positioned to step into the moment of this Christmas season to not be afraid to trust in God and to make yourself fully available to him no matter what happens. Remember what the angel of the Lord said to Joseph in his dream. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. As you think about your life and the responsibilities before you today, what is it you are afraid of? What is God asking you to step towards with faith in him as you trust in him 
and choose not to be afraid. If you feel radically underqualified, know that you are in good company because God specializes in using the radically underqualified. He finds great joy and gets great glory when his people choose to trust him and see how he will come through if they will only leave the outcome to him. Will you choose to make yourself available to God this Christmas? To get glory out of your life and situation knowing he has done it time and time again throughout history? Will you be like Joseph and choose to trust and not be afraid to step forward with God regardless of how inadequate you may feel? God wants to use your life and circumstances to bring him glory this Christmas. In Joseph's case, the scripture says, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. How will you respond in your situation and life this Christmas? As we think about that question this morning, and we think about being radically unqualified or underqualified for all that God calls us to sometimes, pray that our response would be, I will serve thee because I love thee. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. And this morning we realize that each one of us are unique and each one of us are called to serve God the way that only we can. And so I pray that our response would be, I will serve thee. I will do what you've called me to do, knowing that you never give up on me. Let's sing it together.
this morning, we realize that each one of us at times feels so inadequate for all that lays before us. And I think especially this Christmas as we um, deal with the pandemic and everything that's around us, it's really easy for us to feel that we just can't do what you called us to, that we can't do all that's on our plate. But Lord, we're so thankful this morning for your promise. As we look at the story of Joseph and we see that you don't use the people we expect. You don't use the, the ones that we consider to be qualified. You use the people that will bring you glory. Lord, you use the foolish things, the weak things, the things, the, the, those of us that will bring you the most glory because we know that what you do through us can only be done by you. And so, Lord, this morning I pray that as we ask ourselves the question, are we willing to give you our all this Christmas? Are we willing to step into whatever it is is before us this morning, knowing, knowing that you never give up on us, that you give us all we need? I pray that our response would be wholeheartedly, I will serve thee. Because I love thee. You came as a babe in a manger. A helpless baby who had to grow and learn. But Lord, you did that so you could identify with us. And that when you died on that cross, you paid the price for us. That we would have a relationship with you. And so we pray this morning that we would hear your tender voice once again. You never give up on us. No matter how inadequate we feel, no matter how useless we feel to face the days ahead, I pray this morning that we would realize you are a God who never gives up on us. Amen. I will serve thee. Perhaps you'd like to stand. Because I Closing song this morning is a very familiar song. We sing time and time again throughout the Christmas season. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus 
asleep on the hay. And every time we sing that, I think it warms our hearts all over, don't it? So we're going to sing that song, Straight True, when the band is ready, please. thanks today for who you are. A God that loves us unconditionally. A God who loves us for what we are here today. And not only that, but Lord, you uplift us and you strengthen us and you uh, direct us in the path that we would have us to follow. All we need to be is obedient to you, Lord, and uh, we will go the direction that you would have us to go. We ask your blessing upon this congregation again now. That's been prayed already this morning that your uh, spirit would be very real in their midst, not only today, but in the days to come as well. Bless every family member that we would represent today, O oh God, whether near or far, we pray that your spirit would be in their midst and you will continue to watch over them in these very troubled days. So God bless us now as we would leave and go our separate ways and may our conversation not only today, but in the days to come, that would be all wrapped around you and glorifying your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 